What if I told you that a common chemical found in countless products and contaminating our environment could be silently increasing your risk of Parkinson's disease by a staggering 500%? This isn't science fiction, it's a terrifying reality affecting millions worldwide. Today, we're diving deep into the world of trichloroethylene, or TCE, a ubiquitous toxin that might be lurking in your home, workplace, or even your drinking water right now. Welcome to our comprehensive exploration of TCE, a chemical hiding in plain sight for decades. By the end of this video, you'll understand why this chemical is so dangerous, how it's impacting lives across the globe, and most importantly, what you can do to protect yourself and your loved ones from its insidious effects. Let's start with the basics. TCE is a colorless, volatile solvent, widely used since the 1920s. Its unique properties made it a favorite in various industries and applications. From degreasing metal parts and cleaning electronics to decaffeinating coffee and dry cleaning clothes, TCE seemed like a miracle chemical. It was even used as an anesthetic until the 1970s. But as we've learned repeatedly, only some things that seem miraculous are safe. TCE is found in a shocking array of products we use every day. This toxic chemical can contain adhesives, cleaning wipes, paint removers, carpet cleaners, and cosmetic products. But here's the real kicker. TCE has been strongly linked to an alarming increase in Parkinson's disease risk. A groundbreaking study published in the Journal of Parkinson's Disease in 2023 revealed that occupational or hobby exposure to TCE was associated with a staggering 500% increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Let that sink in for a moment. A five-fold risk increase from a chemical still widely used today. This study, conducted by a team of researchers led by Dr. E. Ray Dorsey, is just the tip of the iceberg regarding the growing body of evidence linking TCE to Parkinson's. But it gets worse. TCE affects more than those who work directly with it. This insidious chemical can contaminate our air, water, and soil. It evaporates from contaminated groundwater and soil, entering homes, workplaces, and schools undetected, much like the silent killer radon gas. This means that even if you've never knowingly used a TCE product, you might still be at risk. The dangers of TCE extend far beyond Parkinson's disease. This toxic chemical has been linked to various cancers, congenital disabilities, and damage to multiple organ systems. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and World Health Organization have classified TCE as carcinogenic to humans by all routes of exposure. Studies have shown that TCE exposure can increase the risk of liver cancer, kidney cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and even breast cancer. You might be thinking, surely this chemical must be heavily regulated or banned, right? Wrong. While the European Union and two US states have banned TCE, it's still permitted for various uses in many countries. Global consumption of TCE is projected to increase by 3% annually. China, which has the fastest growing rates of Parkinson's disease, now accounts for half the global market for TCE. Let's look at some real life examples of TCE exposure and its devastating consequences. Brian Grant, a former NBA player, was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at the young age of 36. Grant had lived at Camp Lejeune, a Marine Corps base with water contaminated by TCE at levels 280 times safety standards when he was just three years old. For years, Grant enjoyed living on the military base, taking a bus to preschool and exploring its fighter planes. Little did he know that the water he drank, bathed in and swam in was tainted with this toxic chemical. A Navy captain, Amy Lindbergh, was stationed at Camp Lejeune in the 1980s. While there, she swam, ran, and trained in the humid North Carolina heat, drinking lots of water to stay hydrated. 30 years later, at age 57, she was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. The US Department of Veterans Affairs has since established Parkinson's disease as having a presumptive service connection, 
for those who served at Camp Lejeune during the contamination period. Dr. Jesh Mittal, an endocrinologist, grew up near two Superfund sites contaminated with TCE. His childhood homes were less than a mile from these toxic hotspots, and he even attended high school adjacent to a manufacturing site known to be contaminated with TCE. He was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at the shockingly young age of 38, with no family history or genetic markers for the disease. These stories are just the tip of the iceberg. Countless individuals have been unknowingly exposed to TCE through contaminated water, polluted air, or occupational hazards. The tragedy is that many of them may not even realize the source of their health problems. But how exactly does TCE cause such devastating health effects? Let's dive into the science behind this toxic chemical's impact on our bodies, particularly our brains. Studies have shown that TCE exposure leads to the selective loss of dopamine-producing neurons in the substantia nigra, a hallmark of Parkinson's disease. These neurons are crucial for movement control, and their loss leads to the characteristic tremors and mobility issues associated with Parkinson's. TCE also causes mitochondrial dysfunction, which is crucial for cellular energy production. Simply put, it's like cutting off the power supply to our brain cells. This dysfunction is particularly harmful to dopamine-producing neurons with high energy demands. Animal studies have further confirmed these findings. Rats and mice exposed to TCE showed selective loss of dopaminergic neurons, neuroinflammation, and accumulation of alpha-synuclein, all critical features of Parkinson's disease. In one study, exposure to TCE for just six weeks was enough to cause significant damage to the animal's brains. However, the effects of TCE aren't limited to the brain. This chemical can cross the placenta, potentially harming developing fetuses. Maternal exposure to TCE has been associated with low birth weight, congenital heart disease, and neural tube defects. At Camp Lejeune, there were reports of babies born with anencephaly and spinal deformities due to TCE contamination. The toxicity of TCE has been known for nearly a century. In 1932, Dr. Carey McCord, a physician working for the Chrysler Corporation, warned that TCE could be the source of disaster for exposed workmen. He detailed experiments where rabbits died within days from skin exposure to TCE and within hours from inhalation. Yet, we're still grappling with its toxic legacy nine decades later. Now, you might wonder, how can I protect myself and my family from this invisible threat? Here are some crucial steps you can take. Check product labels, look for TCE listed by its full name, trichloroethylene, or its CAS number, January 6, 79. Be aware that it may also be listed under various trade names, such as Triclean, Vitran, or Chlorolen. Avoid products containing TCE. Replace any household products that contain TCE with safer alternatives. This might include certain adhesives, cleaning products, or paint removers. Test your water. If you live near industrial sites, military bases, or in an area with known TCE contamination, have your drinking water tested. Remember, TCE can contaminate groundwater and travel through soil. Install a vapor intrusion mitigation system. If you live in an area with known TCE contamination, consider installing a system similar to those used for radon mitigation. This can help prevent TCE vapors from entering your home through the foundation. Support legislation. Advocate for stricter regulations and bans on TCE use in your area. Contact your local representatives and express your concerns about TCE contamination. Spread awareness. Share this information with friends, family, and your community to help protect others from TCE exposure. Many people are still unaware of the dangers of this chemical. Be cautious in certain occupations. If you work in industries commonly using TCE, such as metal degreasing or dry cleaning, be vigilant about safety precautions and proper ventilation. Consider air purification. High quality air purifiers with activated carbon filters can help remove TCE from indoor air. The fight against TCE contamination continues after individual action. 
we need broader societal changes to address this issue. More research. We urgently need more studies on the long-term effects of TCE exposure and its interaction with genetic risk factors for Parkinson's disease. This research could help us better understand who is most at risk and how to protect them. Cleanup efforts. Contaminated sites must be remediated to prevent further exposure. This includes Superfund sites, military bases, and industrial areas where TCE was heavily used. Better monitoring. TCE levels in water, soil, and air should be regularly tested and publicly reported. This transparency is crucial for public health and safety. Global ban. TCE should be banned worldwide and replaced with safer alternatives. While some countries have taken steps in this direction, a coordinated international effort is necessary to address the problem honestly. Improved regulations. To prevent future contamination, stricter regulations on the use, disposal, and cleanup of TCE are needed. Public education. Increased awareness about the dangers of TCE can lead to better policies and more informed consumer choices. Support for affected communities. Those impacted by TCE contamination need access to healthcare, support services, and potential compensation for their suffering. It's important to note that while TCE is a significant risk factor for Parkinson's disease, it's not the only one. Other environmental toxins, such as certain pesticides, have also been linked to increased Parkinson's risk. Additionally, genetic factors can play a role in susceptibility to both TCE toxicity and Parkinson's disease. This is why ongoing research is so crucial. We must understand how these risk factors interact and who might be most vulnerable. For example, some studies suggest that individuals with specific genetic variations might be more susceptible to TCE's toxic effects. As we wrap up this deep dive into TCE, Remember that knowledge is power. By understanding the risks associated with this chemical, we can take steps to protect ourselves and push for broader changes in society. The story of TCE is a stark reminder of how industrial chemicals can have far-reaching and long-lasting impacts on human health. It's a call to action for more rigorous testing and regulation of chemicals before they're widely used in consumer products or industrial processes. Don't let TCE be the silent killer in your life. Stay informed, stay vigilant, and take action to protect yourself and your loved ones from this pervasive threat. Check your household products, be aware of potential environmental exposure, and advocate for change in your community. Remember, the time for action is now. We cannot afford to wait while this invisible poison continues to threaten our health and the health of future generations. By raising awareness and taking action, we can work towards a world free from the dangers of TCE. Together, we can make a difference. We can push for stricter regulations, demand cleanup of contaminated sites, and choose safer alternatives in our daily lives. Every small action counts in this fight against a chemical that has been silently harming us for far too long. So, what will you do with this information? Will you check your household products for TCE? Will you get your water tested if you live in a high-risk area? Will you spread the word to your friends and family? The power to create change is in your hands. Thank you for joining us on this crucial journey of discovery. Stay safe, stay informed, and let's work together for a healthier, TCE-free future. I'll see you in the following video.